As a beginner to barbecue, I've heard a lot of different tips that I found out simply by just cooking for myself were just untrue. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and today I'm gonna show you what I think is Aaron Franklin's brisket cooking secret, which is rubbing beef tallow all over your naked body. Actually, that one was true, so make sure to give it a try for yourself and let me know how it turns out in the comment section. But anyways, one of the earliest tips I learned when I first started barbecuing was that if you season a brisket overnight, it will produce a much better bark than if you were to season it right before cooking. And I always believe this to be true. But now I think it might be a barbecue myth. And in order to find out, I need to test it. And I have an 18 pound brisket here from Costco to help me out. So I am in no way saying that seasoning your brisket the night before is completely ineffective because by seasoning the night before, assuming there is actually salt in your rub, you're essentially dry brining the brisket. The Maillard reaction is the process that develops the bark or crust on the meat while barbecuing. It occurs when you have sugar and protein, which are both compounds present in meat, plus heat. However, this process cannot begin until the surface of the meat is dry, which if you've ever sprayed a brisket too often or too early throughout a cook, then you know this experience firsthand when you ended up with a barkless brisket. Therefore, by dry brining your brisket, you are drying out the surface of the meat, which speeds up the Maillard reaction, and that gives you a darker bark earlier in the cook. So yes, in summary, if your rub has salt in it, I do believe that if you season it the night before, it can help the bark but I don't think it's absolutely necessary. And I'm gonna prove that by seasoning half of this brisket today and the other half tomorrow. And I believe when this brisket is done cooking, you nor I will be able to tell the difference between either of the sides. So to ensure that I only season one side of the brisket, I'm gonna use saran wrap on the unseasoned side. And I'm doing it this way because first of all, there is no possible way I'm buying two briskets at the current market price. And secondly, the last time I did an experiment on this channel, I tried to cut the brisket in half and what ended up happening is that it cooked way too fast so the fat didn't completely render all the way and the flat even got a little bit dry so that's all i'm doing for today so i'll see you guys tomorrow So the main reason why I have so much confidence that an overnight seasoning is not gonna have any effect on the finished brisket is because of the cooker I'm using. So today I am using my 250 gallon smoker. So all offsets cook with convection, which is basically cooking with moving hot air. And this is done by the draw effect. Technic on a Barbecue has a fantastic video explaining what the draw effect is in his fire management video. And I will have that linked in the description box so you can check that out. But basically the draw effect determines the convection speed. And because in this 250 I can make a massive fire and it has a nice wide and long smokestack, I can get the hot smoke moving very quickly over the meat. This hot air will dry the surface of the meat faster than any other cooker can and that's ultimately the reason why the best barbecue restaurants in the world use offset smokers. No other smoker can cook with a capacity or produce the quality of bark that offsets can. On top of the draw effect, I also use the damper on my 250, which is the part of the smoker that allows you to adjust the opening of the smokestack. And I'm closing my damper to about 50% for part of the cook. Now using the damper does slow down the draw effect, but it also increases the amount of smoke in the smoke chamber, giving you a darker bark faster. And my hypothesis for this experiment is that because of this draw effect and the added use of the damper, when this brisket is done, we won't even be able to tell which side I seasoned the night before because the whole thing will just be so dark. But only time will tell if I'm right, so let's go ahead and let this brisket cook for a while and then we'll check back in later. So I am about five hours into the cook and as you can see, the bark is really setting very nicely. I actually positioned the brisket so that the side that I seasoned the night before is actually facing the door. Again, we're five hours in and already I'm starting to see that it's getting really hard to determine which side is which. In fact, the side that I seasoned the night before is a lot lighter, but that's only because the point is right here and it's oozing out juice and it's pulling, so it's kind of washing the bark a bit. So every 15 minutes I've been just tipping over the brisket and allowing the juice to drip down. I guess we will see once we're ready to wrap and we will have an update then. So we are about eight hours into the cook and at this point by the naked eye test, it's really hard to tell one side from the other. 
but it is dark inside of the smoker, so really can't say for sure still. But still plenty of time left in this cook, and once it's done, we'll be able to put it on the cutting board and get a good look on the outside of the brisket, and also on the inside once we slice into it. So let's go ahead and get this brisket wrapped up so we can finish off this cook. As a side note, Grill Top Experience and Mad Scientist Barbecue both put out videos recently about the effect of salt penetration on meat if you salt the day before versus salting the day of your cook. They actually came out with different results where Mad Scientist Barbecue found that salting before had no effect, while Grill Top found that it had a profound effect. And I'll have both of those videos listed in the description if you're interested. Even though this experiment is specifically on the effect of overnight seasoning on the brisket bark, I'll make sure to give the brisket a taste after I slice it up so that I can kind of be the tiebreaker between their results and also just add another data point to their test. I went ahead and put the wrapped brisket inside of my oven and once it's done, I will rest it to a slicing temperature. And we'll see if this barbecue tip is a fact or merely a smoke screen. As you can see, I used the Sharpie to let myself know which side I seasoned overnight, which is the left side. So just a reminder for myself, season side on the left, season side on the left, season side on the left, season side on the left. So let's go ahead and get this thing opened up and we will find out the results. So I'm actually not going to unwrap this because I don't want to forget which side is which. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just cut this down the middle and I'll remember that this side is the season side. <laughs> oh man. So I am taking a really good look at this brisket and I cannot tell the difference from one side to the other. I mean, of course, on the flat, as you can see, there is some issues with the bark because of the pooling of the rendering fat and the liquid. I didn't do a really good job of keeping up with tipping the brisket. So on both sides of the brisket, it's kind of messed up. But if you just look at the point, like it is so incredibly dark. So I think it's safe to say that my hypothesis was correct, but I'm gonna go ahead and slice up this brisket to see if there's any tangible differences on the inside of the brisket. So the fact that I cooked this in my offset is a huge reason why the overnight seasoning visually didn't make a difference for the bark. If you cooked with something with a lot less convection, like a Kamado or a Weber Smoky Mountain, I would guess for those cookers, seasoning the night before would in fact make a difference. But I think the most important takeaway from this video is that there are so many different ways to get the same results. There really aren't that many you have to's in barbecue. So it's important to learn and understand as many tricks as you can so you can use them to get the results you want when you want them. Okay, so now for the inside of this brisket. So I'm gonna pick a big piece of flat here and kind of just take a look at it. Seriously, I cannot tell a difference, like even looking close up. So in terms of the bark, I cannot notice any tangible difference, uh, even looking really close at this slice. But what I did notice is that the smoke ring on the side that I seasoned the night before is darker. But again, I'm not very good at managing a fire, especially in the 250. So this could be this side just getting exposed to convection from really high flames. So it's hard to say, but maybe maybe it did affect the smoke ring. I, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a piece off of both sides. Kick weight. Oh, I goofed. So I'm a complete dummy. After repeating season side on the left like a million times, I totally forgot that the left side is actually the side that I seasoned overnight. So actually the side that I seasoned right before I put it on the smoker had the darker smoker rings. But I ultimately don't think that this was an effect due to seasoning it for one hour versus 24 hours. I think it was really just my poor fire management. But anyways, let's give each of these pieces a try. Very good. In terms of the texture of the bark, in terms of the saltiness, the flavor overall, tastes like any other brisket that I would normally make. But I will say that I usually season my briskets overnight, so there's no surprise here. You know what? Let me cleanse my palate with some Sam's Cola. All right, now it's time for the side that I seasoned one hour before putting it on. Yeah, I really... <laughs> Seriously, I cannot taste the difference between the two. So based on my tests and the results, it turns out that seasoning your brisket the night before to improve the bark is a myth. Using the damper is only one of the seven tricks that I know to get a dark bark on your brisket. So if you wanna know what those other six techniques are, make sure to watch the next video on your screen where I show you how to make the world's darkest brisket.